Deer found her. As you know, there's no blueprint for entrepreneurship. You wear so many hats, you burn the midnight oil, you pour your heart and soul into everything that you do. But without a doubt, the journey is worth every single second that you put into it. I'm Lindsay Pinchuk, host of the Deer Found Her podcast. I say this because I've lived it for over a decade. I started my first company with $500 in my pocket and a baby in my belly. I grew it and I sold it all. This podcast is my weekly letter to you. We'll talk all things starting, growing, nurturing, and in some cases, even selling a business. Together with some of my closest contacts, I'm here to help you find your own success, whatever that means to you. The ride as a founder is the ride of your life. So come on in and join me for another episode that will get you one step closer to reaching your own founder goals. Welcome back to another episode of Dear Founder. Within 30 seconds of me meeting today's guest online, I was hysterically crying and she will tell you that. Truly, I was so overcome with emotion in meeting Caroline DeMore, not only because of how natural it was for her to initially speak out against the terrorism and atrocities committed against the Jewish people on October 7th, but because she has continued to stand up for the Jewish community ever since. I see her as an ally, as a friend, and as someone who has been so incredibly brave during this time, and I will forever be grateful for her. Welcome back to another episode of Dear Found Her. I don't remember the exact date, but I found Caroline DeMore sometime soon after October 7th. I came across her while scrolling on Instagram in a video that has since gone viral. Caroline was pointing out the facts of the terrorist attack on Israelis, and in that video, she stood up for Jewish people. She herself isn't Jewish. And with tears streaming down my face, I knew I needed to meet this beautiful soul who spoke out and who has continued to speak out supporting the Jewish community. Caroline is known as Pizza Girl. She's an actress. She's an influencer. She's a businesswoman and she's a mom. And I am beyond honored to have her here with me today. So Caroline, welcome. Hi, thank you so much for having me. This is awesome. This is like probably one of my most favorite gets to date. I just want you to know. I'm so excited that you're here. I'm honored that you're here. I know you're being requested a lot right now for speaking. And the fact that you've made the time for this um, really just means a lot to me. So thank you. Of course, without a doubt. I was like, yes, supporting female founders. Like you're amazing. Well, I want you to start off before we kind of get into what's been going on since October 7th. I want you to start off by letting our listeners know who you are. What do you do? What is Pizza Girl? So... I'm Caroline DeMore. I grew up in the DeMore's Pizza family, which is a very well-known, delicious pizza shop that's been around for over 30 years out here uh, in LA. Um, Over the years, there have been different locations. And as a kid, well, sadly, my mother passed away when I was five. So that's really how it starts. Um, And my father had to raise four little girls all by himself. Um, And he wasn't fully like prepared. Obviously nobody can prepare for something like that. Um, you know, we didn't have a lot of help. We ended up having to go to a lot of the catering gigs with dad. Um, we'd be going to, you know, sets of 90210 and he would cater all the big like movie sets and TV shows back then. So he had this great idea to put me and my little sister in these matching shirts that said pizza kid. (laughs) So we'd show up to the movie sets. We'd be helping catering. Like we started working on the pizza truck and everything at a very young age. Um, and I really think that that's where I got my work ethic ingrained in me. I think it's important to have kids like go to work with their parents. Honestly, I, I really do. And now I have my daughter coming to work with me and it's, she's already trying to come up with her own business ideas. So it is, you definitely lead by example. And I think when you leave the kids home with the babysitter, um, they're really missing out on so many opportunities to actually learn how to um, come up with great ideas and how to actually make those ideas work um, and put them into, you know, not everybody has ideas, but like, how do you actually get an idea and turn it into a business? Um, and watching my dad do that with no college background, you know, it was really cool to see. And, you know, again, I wasn't very good in school. Um, I went through a serious, like 
teenage party girl phase, um, which is very easy to find online, unfortunately for me. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, but you know, I learned a lot through it. I, I really ran from the whole pizza girl thing as a teenager because, you know, kids are funny. Kids are weird. Kids are mean. Um, you know, they all would call me out and be like, Oh, the pizza girl, where's the pizza at? You know, there was just like a thing that when you're young, you kind of just, you don't really know how great you have it and embrace who you are yet. So I went off and did every other thing under the sun that you could imagine to try to escape kind of this pizza girl, um, name and moniker. I was an act, I was in movies. I was, um, you know, I had a swimwear line. I, you know, was a DJ and all of these things were mildly successful because I am like, a serial entrepreneur. I definitely have that spirit. You definitely need that um, in order to make things work. However, none of them were even close to as successful as Pizza Girl because when I finally was like, you know what? I became a mom. I then, you know, went to the went to the store and bought my first jarred sauce and was appalled. I just thought it tasted so terrible. I felt bad for humanity, honestly, that they had to, you know, most of them didn't have the luxury that I had, which was a restaurant, which made amazing sauces, a grandmother that made incredible Italian sauces, gravy, we call it. And, um, I tried my first jar of sauce and I was just like, and this was like the high end, the one that everybody loved. And I was like, Oh, this is garbage. I was like, I need to fix this, solve this. And then I was like, you know what? I am the pizza girl. And once I embraced who I actually am, that's when my whole life came together. That's when everything fell into place. Um, my authenticity to who I truly am resonated with people. And that's when I was able to, you know, get stores to listen to me, you know, get investors to listen to me. People want um, the truth. They want to, they want something authentic. So give us an overview of what is Pizza Girl yeah. to those who, who have never even heard, heard about it, it before. Yeah. So Pizza Girl is an all organic Italian foods and now even Italian um, electronics company, you know, because I'm just now launching things that I never even thought I would, which is so exciting. Um, but I started out with just three delicious organic pasta sauces, but you can use them for pizza, pasta, chicken dishes and whatnot. They're all organic. They're all OU kosher certified. They're all woman owned. Um, you know, so they taste the best. They are the best tasting jarred pasta sauces you will ever have out of a jar. Mark my words. I've taste tested them against everything. Um, they are the cleanest, all organic, no added sugar. Um, just the best really. Once you try it, you know, um, and you never go back. So I have the sauces. We're about to launch, um, another sauce in 2024. I'm going to continue on with all of the in-store supermarket things. Um, and then we are going, we are just now launching our new pizza girl pizza grills. They are the cutest pizza ovens, but not only are they just cute, they work their little butts off. Okay. They are so incredible. They actually make pizza taste like my dad's restaurants. I was just, I found there was a big gap in the U S market with pizza ovens where it was either these super expensive four to $800 giant ovens that you have to have in the backyard. You have to have a big house for, you, you know, it, it didn't cater to people in apartments, to students, to, um, you know, young moms that want to be able to make pizza and not be freezing in the backyard, you know? So, the Pizza Girl Pizza Grill, not only is it cute and small and it can fit in your cupboard and go, you know, in your cabinet easily, but it, you sometimes want to leave it on your countertop because it's so aesthetically pleasing. Um, but it works so well. You can make literally, you can make pizzas from scratch, from a, a dough ball. You can use it for your frozen pizzas. You can use it for your, you know, take a flat bread and throw your toppings on and you have a pizza in four minutes and it is phenomenal. And right now you can get them at pizzagirl.com um, and they are incredible. Yeah. How long has Pizza Girl been in existence? Pizza Girl has been in existence for about, whoo, like if we're talking like the day I bought the trademark and decided I was going to do it, probably almost like five years now. Yeah. And can you just tell me briefly, like the growth trajectory of Pizza Girl, like how many stores are you in? I kind of want to just paint a picture to the size of your company. Cause you told me before we hit record pizza girl is still so small and it's in its infant stages. And 
And I like I, but I do want to kind of paint the picture of growth for our listeners. Definitely. I started this company with five thousand dollars, an idea and a trademark. Um, I my first supermarket that ever said yes to me was Erwan. I walked in with a jar that didn't even have a proper label on it. I was like, who do I have to talk to? I walked into the one on Beverly. They're like, oh, that's not how you do this. I was like, well, that's how I do this. And I waited in the office all day long. Finally, this incredible woman, Vicky Osana, gave me a chance. She took a spoon out of her desk and took a bite. And um, right there, she gave me all the air wands. And then, you know, that opened some doors. And I was like, oh my God, I got to make some sauce. And then I've been in Erwan. I've been in all the, I'm in all the Whole Foods in Southern California, which is really great. I'm in Bristol Farms. Um, we just got Albertsons, which is incredible. It's huge. Congratulations. Huge. Thank you. So now we're in a little, uh, a little over 2000 stores. Um, but you know, there's 20,000 stores we want to be in. So we have a lot of growth, but growth takes capital. Um, I just took on my, uh, second round of, you know, very limited amount of funding. Um, so we're growing. It's a very care- careful growth, let's just say, because I've now watched so many companies just take on a ton of funding, you know, never make, you know, their bottom line work out for them and then they just crumble. So we're going, we're growing slowly, but um, at the right pace. And that is so smart. I cannot even tell you how many founders over the last 15 years since I started my first company, I have seen come and go because they have taken immense amounts of money, blown the money in a non-strategic way and are out of business. So kudos to you for recognizing how important it is to grow slow and strategic. Thank you. There will be a lot of people out there that will try to encourage your speedy growth, but it's for their benefit, not yours a lot of the time. And um, I think it's very important to stand your ground. Obviously we've made some mistakes, but that's how you learn. Um, And I think you just got to learn from them and continue to just do what you know is, is right and best. Yeah. Stay in the stores that you're going to actually sell in. (laughs) So one of the things that is very apparent just in following you on social media and in the last 10 minutes of this conversation is that you do things your way. And that is really commendable because I think so many, so many founders feel the need to go with the grain, you know, not against the grain, but go with the grain. And one of the things that you have done in the last month is what I explained in the beginning and how I found you is you have stood up and made a very bold statement in support of the Jewish community. And before we kind of get into that and how it's impacted your business, Mm -hmm. I want to ask you, and I've been wanting to ask you, like, what was it that made you make that initial video? Because it was, it's very clear when you watch it and I'm going to link it in the show notes that you got on and you were just kind of saying what you felt. Yeah. I honestly, still to this day, I think for me, I just couldn't believe that something so atrocious and devastating and awful um, could happen to so many people um, in Israel to then see with with within even just a few days where there was not even time to mourn, there was such a backlash and hate parade, literally multiple hate parades all over. I was just shocked. Honestly, I was like, oh my God, these people are now being shamed and being called out for playing the victim card when they are scared of what just happened to their people. Like it was just mind blowing to me. And I don't follow trends. I don't do what is, you know, popular. I do what is right within my heart. And I don't care what anybody has to say about it. The amount of people that came out and were like, oh, your business is going to go down. Your, you know, your career is over. You're going to be canceled, whatever. Um, they're wrong. Um, they're so wrong. And, um, I just don't really care what they have to say. I'm going to stand up for humanity. Did you think for a minute before posting that video, like this could impact my business or it could negatively impact my business? No, I thought about it after. (laughs) So what happened was I posted the video, just the most natural me. I wasn't like, should I, shouldn't I, blah, blah, blah. I mean, you could tell I had wet hair. I was in the I was going to say, you had just gotten out of the shower. Like, (laughs) I saw saw something so disturbing. My girlfriend had just called me 
And one is in Israel. She went just for a trip um, to like learn about, you know, her heritage. October 7th happens and she's still there staying now, speaking to the hostage families, getting me in touch with the families. Like we've been working together from afar um, to understand and get these stories out there. So when I hear her calling me crying that her stupid friends are now like literally making her feel like crap and not standing up for her as she's running into bomb shelters. I'm literally so appalled. So I just ran to the backyard and was like, this is insane. Everybody must feel how I feel. And then I put, put away my phone and I didn't even think about it again. I went to a concert with my boyfriend that night, you know, just thinking about, wow, is it, you know, how long is this going to go on? Whatever. And then I opened my phone for a second and I was like, Oh, Oh my God, what is happening? Why are there 32,000, you know, comments or likes or whatever it was. And then it was just growing and growing and over 6 million views. Like I was like, what? I was honestly quite terrified in that moment. I was like, what did I do? Like, am I in trouble? Like, what is this, what does this mean? And then, um, the next day I realized what, like, I'm one of the only non-Jewish people that's saying that this is an atrocity and that this is outrageous. Like, the only reason that went so viral is because there's not enough of us doing it. And, um, it shouldn't be heroic. It should be normal and human. And I'm, I was then appalled that it became this thing that, um, nobody's doing or even worse is like taboo to do, you know? And I just kept seeing the same narrative over and over again. And then I realized after doing a lot of research, meeting with a lot of people, um, who know a lot more than I do, um, it's just a hate campaign on the other side, sadly. So there are, trust me, there are a lot of people, good and bad, on, on all sides of this. But there's definitely bots. There's definitely, um, you know, things that people are just being told to say over and over again. Because they don't even make, it doesn't even make sense, a lot of the things that they're saying. Like, I will post something literally just about my neighbor who is scared and wants to change her, you know, kid's last name. And then they're just saying stuff that, you know, genocide. I'm like, my neighbor has nothing to do with any sort of genocide or political thing that like, like, I don't know. It's crazy. It's, it. it's crazy. Yesterday or a couple of days ago, I posted a video of John Mellencamp and his speech from a year ago at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, where he was standing up for anti-Semitism. There was not a mention of Israel in this speech. It was all like standing up for hate. And someone commented like, shit emojis. And I wrote her back and I said, Are, like, really? I said, there's nothing even about Israel. Like you don't have to love Israel, but all this is about is standing up for hate. Like I don't stand, I don't hate Palestinian people. Why do you, a white European hate Jewish people? Right. And right. And what did she say? Nothing, nothing. No one has a response, right? Like never respond. And that's the thing. And that's why I'm literally here to empower people who want to speak up, but they're scared. They're not that bad. They're not that scary. Have you ever spoken up in this way for a social cause or a group of people? Like how has this before October 7th, like how has have social issues played into your rhetoric online? Absolutely. So I was, you know, called out for during COVID, you know, kind of taking my daughter out to all the BLM movement um, marches and walks. And my daughter and I are painting, you know, uh, peace and love signs and we're going out and we're doing this together and people are like taking your daughter out and you're endangering her and just all these stupid things. But it was definitely never at this level of, you know, <clears throat> um, of back and forth commenting. Um, but yeah, so I, I, I've always spoken up for gay rights, you know, um, and my mom actually passed away from AIDS. So my sisters and I always so walk sorry. and then we're shocked to see like people on the sidelines, like, <clears throat> because a lot of the people walking are gay people, you know? So we see people on the sidelines with like hate signs and like hate, you know, and I'm like, we're literally walking about a disease that's like, people are just so misled. Um, but I've always stood up for, you know, <clears throat> gay rights, women rights, trans rights, uh, anything I can do. Um, I am always super vocal. I believe that everybody should be treated equally. Um, including Jewish people, which is why this time it's very weird. I've considered myself a woke liberal. Okay. My, my, um, I've never been considered on the side of like, considered myself to be on the side of the, like 
Republicans or any of that, which is so bizarre that uh, why, why this time am I on the total opposite side when I'm just, again, sticking up for the same thing, which is human rights against hate. So what has happened since October 7th? So, and, and actually I looked at the date of the video. I think it was actually October 19th that you made that video or like, I've had an outpouring of love, um, from mothers, from so many moms that are so terrified right now and that come to my page to feel a little bit safer and that feel like, okay, thank you. Somebody does care um, about us. And um, <clears throat> that's honestly what's kept me going. I've done my best to try to respond to almost every mom in my DMs. I like sit there and I'm like um, doing everything I can. Um, and, you know, I of course have had an influx of hate for sure, but they don't bother me for some reason. I, I really, it, like, I do not scare easily. Um, I, I'm actually kind of embarrassed for them um, because if you're going to go and spew hate, like... It's so funny that you say that because I share, like, the disgusting comments yeah, and people, like, get really, like, upset. Like, not at me, but they get upset that I'm receiving, on the receiving end. And I'm right. like, oh God, like, this is nothing, Right. Yeah. And, and I put it out there and, and people say like, how do you deal with this? How, and I'm like, you know what? I know that that hate is there. Yeah. And I just feel like you need to know that that hate is there too, so that we can come together and love more. Right. Yeah. And I'm noticing like people are coming together. Like I have to give it to the Jewish community, man. Like when I can't even believe it, when you guys are so scared and literally being attacked for having feelings, um, you come together in the most beautiful of ways. Like, I can't even believe it. Like, it's like you guys bring like light and you help each other and you support each other. It's beautiful. So serious, um, serious props to all of you guys for how you just um, come together in times of darkness. I am super uh, inspired by it. And, and thank you for saying that because I met, I actually was on a podcast today sharing the drop today, sharing like my experience as a Jewish woman. And that was one of the, like the questions was like, what do you want people to know about the Jewish community? Or like, do you have hope in any of this? And I said, yes, because I've seen how the Jewish community has come together and put aside every difference just to make sure that what happened in the 1940s doesn't happen again. Right. And, so. um, I can see people starting. And like I said, like I just went and spoke, I was asked to go and speak in Canada, a room full of 500 plus women. Um, half of them were not Jewish and half of them were scared, um, but wanted to come and hear what I had to say as another non-Jewish person speaking up. And I cannot tell you how many of them have reached out to me and said, thank you so much. Like you inspired me. Um, I reached out to my Jewish friends. I reach out that like, they're just human. Like, thank you so much for saying that. And that right there is enough for me to keep going. Um, and I will not stop. I will not be silenced. I will not, I, I do not scare easily, like I said. And I am also empowering these women to speak up as well and to not feel scared. And like I said, this one girl, she did. She came to the, my my um, speech. She then spoke up because she saw some really hateful things, you know, on her walk home. Um People then started to uh, spew hate towards her and say she was playing the victim card, same buzzwords. They use the same line over and over and over again. Um, and so she reached out to me. She's like, I'm scared. Should I take it down? You know, you inspired me. And so I sent her a video message and I said, always do what you feel is going to make you feel safe first and foremost, but I'm proud of you. And, you know, I'm here for you and any haters, you send them my way. <laughs> send them my way. Um, I got your back and you know, it's okay to, to stand up and they come and they go and they'll just go and they'll just go harass somebody else in a minute. So don't worry. So about you, them. you just got back from Vancouver and I think you told me that you had some other things too, that were like coming up on Good. this note, like not even for pizza girl, but like on this note. <laughs> right. So it's been such an interesting balance that I'm trying to figure out. It's like there was a, a post that I posted about how I hadn't posted about my company in several weeks, um, which is also 
hard and scary to figure out how do you balance that? How do you post something about something tragic that happened and then post, Hey, check out my, you know, new launch that I have coming up. And this launch, my company and I worked on for a very long time. It was the new pizza ovens that we're very excited about. And, um, you know, it's been a really interesting and hard balance, but I will say that people know that I have a daughter. People know that I have a, you know, mouths to feed and a business and we all have to survive. So it's an, it's been an interesting transformation. I'm not going to give up my stance just to focus on my business and I'm not going to give up my business to, to continue the stance. So I have to figure out how to do the balance and I want um, other people out there to know that you can find that balance as well. And thank you for saying that. And that is like a big part of why I wanted you here today, because it's, it's funny. I told you before we got on, like I had a zoom with someone yesterday and they were like, what do you, what do you talk about online when you're not talking about Jewish people? And, you know, and I too have a business and mouth to feeds. And the interesting thing is, and I don't know if you are finding this, but it might not be so forward at the moment on my social media, but more people are inquiring about my business and my marketing services and what I do than ever before in my DMs on my website, through the podcast, um, which has been just met, you know what I mean? Like we just met and we're already talking like, Hey, we could also talk about this stuff. I think that when you're a good person, good things happen. End of story. Speak out on good things. Good things will happen. I am that proof. Um, you know, yes, I've lost a lot of people I thought were friends, clearly they weren't. And and to that note, if you're losing friends, they were not your friends in the first place. You're not, as long as you're not out there spewing hate, right? Like I get why people want to unfollow people that are just posting like hateful things. Nobody should, should be doing that. But if you're just saying, Hey, I'm Jewish and I'm scared and you lose friends, those were not your friends. You know what I mean? So, and that's how I feel too. Like if I, I, I've also gained a, a ton of new friends. And, yes. I, and those are the people that I, I'm going to give my time and energy to. How have you found that balance now? Because, you know, it's, it's, it has been, you know, two months close yep. to, and I find that like for myself, like every now and then I'm like posting a little bit about work. Like I just also had a launch. I launched a new mentorship community for small business owners and it's done really well. However, I do think it would have done so much better had I talked about it more on social media. But to your point, I felt really funny. And and I'm I too am trying to find the balance. So I don't know that there's a right answer to this or, you know, but what have you found? I have found that there are days when I feel so lost and so confused as to how to do both. And then there are days when I really seem to have it under control. Right. And I think it also goes with like the flow of information because right now we're getting a lot of just really sad and difficult information, all the hostages coming in and going and finding out what's happening with them. Um, so it's definitely, it's not easy, but I will say that it is important to, um, not completely lose yourself because there's this whole analogy of if you have the oxygen mask, you have to put it on yourself first so that you can continue to put it on the person next to you. And that is so true. Like if I am not able to, um, feed my family and keep my business going, I'm not going to be able to, you know, travel to, to speak out for, for different communities. So it's very important to take care of yourself and your mental health. Um, so it is important to sign off every now and then stop looking, you know, take a day to yourself, do meditate and, and listen, do, do what you can. Like you're in Chicago, you can't go to walk on the beach. Um, you know, (laughs) I mean, I can, but, (laughs) but you might freeze. Yeah, exactly. Um, but listen, but like, it is important. I know it sounds like so like LA and like foofy of me, but it is important to, 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 take some time because that's how you re there are days when I just feel like I'm falling apart. And then if I just sign off and I, and I go for a walk, I exercise, I get endorphins. I take some time to myself. I'm all of a sudden ready to fight again. You know what I mean? So it's so important, so important to take care of yourself. One of the things that made me absolutely insane and actually is still making me absolutely insane. One of the many things right now is just how many people have just moved just moved on with their lives, but not moved on, but never addressed this, never said anything. 
Um, never, you know, said, Oh God, like, look at what all, like, look at what these terrorists are doing to women. Never said a goddamn word and have just lived their lives, putting their Christmas decorations up, sharing their outfits of the day, especially influencers, business owners. What's your take on that? So I'm actually shocked a bit and a little appalled and by even certain friends of mine, I'm like, Ooh, like I honestly don't even follow some of the people anymore because it is so just, um, what's the word out of touch. I feel like, I feel like it's important. Like I haven't posted a, 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 a frivolous post, you know what I mean? Like a, like, Oh, I'm like, you know, I do like different shoots and things for different brands. And I haven't posted any of that stuff because I feel like the world needs us right now. And, um, I think, I think it's important to at least address what's going on. And everybody has a platform. Everybody has a voice, no matter how big you think it is. Um, at least share and show some support. I don't know. I, I definitely struggle with that. I definitely really struggle with that. It's hard for me to see people not address the 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 brutal rape of so many women like how can you not address this like it's it's uh shocking yeah it's a what hard would one. you tell someone who is so concerned about losing followers or losing business um by speaking out I mean what would you say to someone I mean there are so many people who I think I just say- really don't because they are they're worried about their bottom line I would say that there's way more important things in this world and you are very lost about what's important. That's what I would say. I would say, um, get some new perspective. <laughs> Life is short, you know? And if people kept saying to me, like, what if you, th-? I, I go, if, if I lose my business tomorrow, at least I know that I stood for something. Um, you know, but the crazy thing is, and this is not the why or anything, but the crazy thing is, and I've seen it with myself is that you have been put in front of so many more people who are going to support you. Like I said, karma, karma, you guys, like, like if you are just, and this is one of the things I spoke about with Rabbi Steve leader, um, on a live that we did, I said, you, when you are truthful with your heart and you're not hiding and you're not just like, Oh, I'm not going to talk about that because I'm scared of this. Um, that's also like manifestation. You know what I mean? That's also, um, talking to the universe and like what you're going to get back is what you give out. It's the same thing. You want to manifest all these positive things in your life. You also need to project, like put good things out into the universe and they will come back. I promise you they will. Um, and it's happened for me. Like, you know, you know about my company now, you know about me and my crazy pink hair and my, my pink oven, you know, and that just happened because I said, this sucks and we need to speak up for our Jewish friends. One of the things that you said in the very beginning of this conversation was you were talking about leading by example, um, as it pertained to you being an entrepreneur and your daughter seeing you work and you seeing your dad work. And that is something I wholeheartedly believe in as well. Um, you know, my, one of my greatest moments ever was when I walked in on my daughter playing quote bump club, which is my first company was bump club. And we used to have these events for expectant parents. And I walked in with, and she was giving away a stroller. Like she was raffling off a stroller, which is what we used to do. And it was in that moment that I realized that my kids were always listening and always watching. And it was so important to lead by example and not just when it comes to entrepreneurship. And I saw your post the other day of your daughter in Vancouver with you and you were preparing for your speech and she too was preparing next to you. And I saw the letter that she wrote. And so my question to you is not just in regards to entrepreneurship, but what is the legacy that you want to leave your daughter? I really hope, um, and, and let me tell you, us parents, we have such a responsibility. Do not have children. If you are not going to lead by example, please, because when you're looking at these kids who are now praising Osama bin Laden, I think about who are, where are their parents, who are their parents and why have they not shown them how terrible and awful and devastating that was? I don't understand. I blame those parents, um, a lot and obviously what they're learning in this, in schools, but I, can see that everything I do is shaping my child. And her main thing is on the school campus. If she sees someone being bullied, 
she goes and she helps that person out without a doubt. Even if she's scared, even if that bully is going to push her down, she's going to go and she's going to raise a stink and she's going to help that kid. Um, and that is what I continue to want to show her um, and want to show uh, the world. And hopefully she will be doing it from such a young age and inspire so many people um, to do it too. And we have to educate our children because that's the only way to get a better world, truly. So I'm going to ask you the same last question that I ask everyone. I know this conversation wasn't, this conversation wasn't a normal Dear Founder conversation because we didn't dissect your business. And I hope in another time that you'll come back and we can, especially as the pizza ovens take off and you continue to grow. You know, I really want people to know about you. I want people to follow you. I want people to buy from you and to support you. Um, but I do want you to leave our community who is a group of small business owners and female founders and just women who, you know, have big aspirations. I do want to ask you the same question I ask every female founder, and that is what are three actionable steps that you would tell another female founder who's just getting started? I would say first things first is go with your gut. Don't let anybody tell you differently because as soon as you have a good idea, everybody's going to try to put their spin on the idea. Um, don't take no for an answer. I had so many no's from so many investors. Um, and don't let big disasters take you down. Like if you're going to build a big company, you're going to have so many major disasters um, that you'll, that you'll think, well, I think, we're done. This is it. You know, I've had so many and you just have to have that mindset. You're going to get through this and just keep going and look back every year and say, am I at a completely different place this year than I was last year? That's all you have to do um, and continue to move forward. Caroline Demore, founder and CEO of Pizza Girl. You are amazing. I cannot thank you enough for being here. And I do want to say, and I know I said this before we hit record, I speak for the whole Jewish community when I say thank you for your never ending support and for your love and for your care and for your concern. I really hope that people see this and take action similar to yours. And I, I just, I cannot thank you enough for encouraging people to do so. So thank you so much. Absolutely. And I'm giving you a virtual hug right now. I hope you feel it. And I'm giving you one back. Yay! <laughs> I hope that you enjoyed that conversation as much as I enjoyed having it. Caroline is a breath of fresh air. She is an incredible human. And honestly, she is someone to take a cue from. Normally, I would leave five takeaways as many of you who listen to me regularly know from the end of my episodes. But today's takeaway from the conversation is simple, and it's a favor from me. Support Pizza Girl. Use the code FOUNDHER15. It's linked in the show notes. And show Caroline and Pizza Girl some love. Make sure you give them a follow on Instagram, also linked in the show notes. And support her and let her know how amazing and incredible that she is. That's it. That's all, that's all I want you to take away from today's conversation. As always, we have a brand new episode coming your way every Tuesday and Thursday. I want to thank Caroline DeMore for being here with us today, for sharing her story, for sharing her passion, and just for being her. And I want to thank all of you guys for being here as well. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being here. And until next time.